Very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Christmas Eve edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well, having a good day, whatever time zone you're in and uh, wherever you are. I hope your organisation and plans have been a success uh, because uh, if you're not organised now, I'm afraid it's probably too late now. So, um, But uh, the weather is certainly playing ball. It's mild across uh, the UK across Ireland and a, a large way the western portions of Europe. Different ballgame, however, in the North American side of the Atlantic because we have seen temperatures as cold as nearly minus 53 uh, up in Rabbit Kettle in Northwest Territories uh, over the last, I think it was yesterday morning, in fact. This temperature actually um, is showing minus 53 of medial seal for the 24th, but I believe that is actually yesterday's reading. But that was Canada's coldest December minimum in 42 years. You have to go back to 1980 for the last time, you know, we've seen a temperature as cold as that. So very, very impressive indeed. Also, what was impressive is the temperature dropped to minus nine uh, as far south as Houston Intercontinental Airport. Um, so very impressive. We did see um, steam coming off the Gulf of Mexico, uh, something you don't often see, actually, uh, you know, in, within the Gulf of Mexico waters. Uh, it's only when you've got these polar Arctic air masses that drive all the way south uh, off North America and out over the open waters that you get that effect. We also seen cloud streaks where bitterly cold, dry air sweeps off the continent over those warmer than normal uh, Gulf of Mexico waters and you've got uh, some nice um, streaks of cloud known as cloud streaks uh, or cloud streaks actually should I say um, so very very impressive cold we've seen um, temperatures as low as minus six minus seven in Florida Panhandle for example and um, you know there has been records there was say uh, a minus 50 in Montana there was um, I think down to zero in North Texas which is minus 18 Celsius and uh, I think temperatures dropped into the single digits in Atlanta this morning. So, um, you know, minus 11 Celsius down in Atlanta and, uh, you know, in the in the mountains of uh, North and South uh, Carolina, we had temperatures um, at or slightly below the zero mark this morning. So certainly a notable cold spell, of course, the known cold spots down into the minus 30s and minus 40s um, across the northern tier of the country. And again, that, that kind of happens when you get these uh, Arctic outbreaks that drop south out of Canada. But certainly it will be a, a, a cold spell that, that is remembered, uh, that's for sure, and, and, and will go into the history books. But of course, we've got a very powerful jet stream crossing the, the Pacific at the moment. And what will eventually happen is it's going to wipe out this cold and uh, the cold will be bottled up across northern portions of North America. But uh, I want to have a quick look, actually, at just a couple of my tweets, um, and then I'll get into the the meat of today's video. But uh, certainly, you know, some great stuff here from Terry Goose, at minus 52.6 Celsius, recorded at Rabbit Kettle. So I think that was the temperature that we will see we're showing for today. We've seen temperatures at 3 p.m. yesterday, by the way, in Texas. This is uh, from Jesse Farrell of AccuWeather. And we had a temperature range of 2, two Fahrenheit and Periton versus 75 degrees at the Zapata. So an incredible range in temperature that, again, you do see in Texas when you've got these Arctic outbreaks, milder to the south and ahead of these Arctic boundaries, you still uh, get some of these incredible uh, variations in temperature. Um, I know a wind chill um, recorded, I believe, in Montana of minus 74 Fahrenheit. So really, really intense cold indeed. Interesting article there. By um by, it was garbage anyway. It's 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 like probably the sun or, um the Daily Sport or something like that. But uh, this was a, you know, a screen capture Arctic blast, coldest snap in the hit British, the British Isles, uh, and and the snowiest snowiest period for twelve years. I just simply do not get my head around where they get this information from. This, by the way, was a a NASA satellite view of the Scottish snow cover there when, when we had all the cool weather. Wow, that actually feels like ages ago, doesn't it, uh, since we had that. But interesting capture. I only happened to notice that a couple of days ago. And um, that was um, 
quite a nice image. Minus 53.4 recorded Robert Kettle from Thierry Goose. This was the coldest temperature ever recorded in Canada for the month of December since 1980, which is amazing stuff here. Also uh, a great visual here, um, mesoscale analysis here in showing that polar frontal system sweeping south over North America. Uh, in the last couple of days and we've seen temperature drops as low as uh, 47 degrees uh, Fahrenheit over northeastern Colorado. We've seen just remarkable temperature differences. Look at this here by uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming here. 43 degrees which is about what, 6 Celsius and then basically between the t time frame of 5 past 1 in the afternoon to quarter past when the temperature was down to 11 so it went from 43 and in 10 minutes it dropped to 11 fahrenheit folks we we just here in the uk anyway we cannot get our head around that kind of temperature drop but it looks as if the, the maximum temperature drop within one hour was 47 degrees fahrenheit which is just bonkers and that just re-emphasizes how incredible the weather can be in the United States and Canada. This was a, a scurry image. This is a video here capturing um, this, the storm system uh, that affected the United States here. I don't know whereabouts in, in America this is, but look at that there. Absolutely terrifying stuff, isn't it? So yeah, certainly um, our thoughts are with people who were involved in that and across many parts of the country where there's been nasty accidents in recent times. But the ECMWF, this is the, the weeklies, by the way, here. So there's a lot of warmth now, if you notice here, northern northeastern Canada, across a, a large swathe of Siberia and Russia, it's warmer than normal. A anywhere really from France uh, and the southern half of the British Isles, right the way around to the Pacific coast, so this is the upcoming seven day period. So this is basically the week now between Christmas and New Year. And we have got a lot of milder conditions now involved in the pattern. Look at the central and eastern United States still below normal across western portions of Canada. Up into Alaska, cold than normal as well, if you can see here. But as we play through this loop, um, you can see here the change that kind of starts to show. So we start to warm things up big time over the United States. So look at that there, uh, how much warmer the middle latitude pattern is. Uh, and this is the, the day four through 11 here. And uh, we'll continue to skip through the five through 12. Look at Europe, look at much of Northern Asia, look at North America and look at Greenland. So we're flipping the pattern on its head from what we had. We're going from a firmly negative Arctic oscillation where we had strong blocking warmth stacked up within the Arctic with a lot of cold displaced within the middle latitude pattern. Eastern Asia, by the way, is still very, very cold, which is quite interesting to see. But then, of course, we're flipping it on its head. We're warming things up within the Arctic region or cooling things down, should I say. And we're warming things up within the middle latitude pattern. But the ECMWF weeklies indicate that there is a little bit of a change that takes place as we progress through January. Notice here that we start to see things cooling back down again. Look at Europe, look at Asia, even North America possibly starting to turn colder as well. Why would that be the case? Well, the ECMWF, and remember I just showed you the ECMWF weeklies, is indicating that we go back through phases eight and into one so as we go through next week it looks as if the manjulian oscillation according to ecmwf is rotating into phases one and then eventually it goes into the null phases as joe pastardi of weatherbell would say kind of in a weaker state so to speak but it seems to be a relatively pronounced relatively strong signal of seven in the eight and then it, it, it goes into to phases one which to me indicates that we could start to be seeing the pattern that we had during the first half of December possibly try to repeat 
Now remember, we had it in September. We had it to a lesser extent in November. We had very cold spell during the month of November in the United States. Then it warmed back up. Then, of course, we've seen the very strong blocking during the first half of December. We're seeing the recovery in that now. And is it possible that the models are seeing the pattern return back to where we were during you know, the mid and second half of January. I think we're in for a warm start of the new year. And, um, you know, when you look at the, this is the, the GFS 500 millibar pattern here, you can see here that we, we start to see the congregation of low heights within the high latitude region. We start to, you may as well say this is the jet stream mark and the, the polar air versus the warmer air within the middle latitudes. Notice here how it starts to become flattened as we go through the period, or especially in the run-up to, to, to the new year. Look at how flat, look at how zonal the jet stream is right the way around the pole. And we've got lowest heights compared to normal stacked up towards the Arctic region. Now, if you look at the polar vortex, and like I said in yesterday's video, I don't know for sure whether they're coupled or not, the troposphere and the stratosphere, but isn't it interesting how we start to see the strengthening of the jet stream winds within the middle altitude pattern? We start to see heights lower to the north. We see them rise to the south. We've got, you know, continental air getting, you know, replaced by Pacific air, by Atlantic air and whatnot. We're starting to see the continents warming up. And the polar vortex strengthens, becomes quite concentric. It's strong within the center. And you notice here that it almost is representing the pattern underneath at 500 millibars and below. But watch this space. As we play through the loop, watch the warming that takes place over North America, over Europe, and then starts to show up over Asia. And look at this here. For the very first time, we're starting to see the whites appear. Look at the displacement of the polar vortex. Look at this here. We're starting to see the white colors showing up. We have got almost the initial signs of a sudden stratospheric warming appearing on the models. This is for the end of week one of January. Remember that there's a lag between any sort of, if this was to happen, the sudden stratospheric warming, count 10 days to a fortnight after this was to happen 10 HPA, providing that it trickles down through the atmosphere from trop the stratosphere to troposphere. Then the response takes place within the 500 millibar pattern. But this is very interesting here. It could disappear next week. So who knows? But this here, folks, would coincide almost beautifully with my winter forecast. And that certainly is a very intriguing look that we have simply not seen in a while. Now, a sudden stratospheric warming doesn't necessarily mean that we're guaranteed a cold spell here in Europe. Could go into North America. We've seen that in 2014, for example. But certainly this is a very intriguing look as we go into the new year. And watch this space. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Do check out marfoganweather.com. Look at my December forecast, my winter forecast. And also the details and, you know, the, the Christmas period here. I don't think there's any real changes uh, in terms of the weather pattern for the next few days here. So watch this space. I'll quickly look at the latest GFS for the next few days here. So, of course, we're at the evening of Christmas Eve. So Christmas Day, of course, tomorrow we're in the mild conditions. We've got southwesterly winds and whatnot. Um, and we've got a rash of, of, of precipitation running from southwest to northeast. Now notice here, as we go towards the midday period of tomorrow, you notice here that we've got a deep area of low pressure to the north. Winds are now starting to turn in from the, the, the west to northwest. We have that colder air moving in. So we are going to probably see a white Christmas in some parts of the northwest uh, during the latter half of tomorrow. Then through Boxing Day and into the 27th, we've got more polar air coming in from the northwest as you can see here and then we've got a, a, a system that moves in maybe some fleet and snow uh, at high ground so yeah um pretty much business as usual 
Um, so have a great Christmas and I'll see you in the next couple of days with more. Thanks for watching.